Joining me once again is Derek Hardy, the creator of the Bat X projection system that you can get at rotogrinders.com or evanalytics.com. Derek, I wanted to talk to you about market movement and CLV. I think this is a very important subject. Because one of the things that I I I tout about your projections, like the ones that I I mean, it's literally what I use. I tell you, please charge more for this. Right. I want less people to use this. Why? Because I want to get the numbers as early as possible and the edges before they go away. I used to do prize picks and underdog. Bad projections come out. Three minutes later, numbers have moved, right? Goes from five and a half to six. Goes from from, from 16 and a half outs to 17. It can like, like and it's all all in tandem with what the bat projections say. So obviously I like getting the head start by using your tomorrow's projections, which are kind of algorithmically created for the next day. And I always say, I love the best feeling hammering a strikeout prop the night before through your tomorrow's projections, wake up in the morning and having it be a full strikeout in my favor, <laughs> right? Getting, getting quote CLV. But a lot of the CLV is, Sharp betters that are also using the Bat X projection system. They're looking at your shows, you know, early in the morning, right? You're putting out content yourself. I'm reading the same thing you're reading, right? You're adjusting stuff. If you, how early is too early? Because some people ask, like, what time do I bet? Like, well, I bet overnight, I bet in the morning, I bet you know, closer to game time as things get updated. But sometimes the CLV that you get on props can be a byproduct, kind of, kind of almost like a mirror effect of projection systems like the bat. Yeah. So how do you judge your projections versus closing lines in props when you have to know that you're causing a lot of the CLV yourself because it's not the book that's saying, oh, this is the sharp number. It's just, oh, we're getting a lot of liquidity on this side and we just want to cover our ass. So we're just going to move the number or copy the number from somewhere else where it has moved. So can you talk a little bit about how you deal if you have the bat X projections and Maybe you're not betting as early as possible. Like, what do these what do these market moves really mean, and how how should one adjust to them? Yeah, so prop markets are not like the super high liquidity markets, like money lines and game totals and and that kind of stuff. Where you know you get closing line value on that, it's very hard for any one person to move that line. Um, and so, if you're getting closing line value on that you're probably on the right side of it. With player props, it's a little trickier because the markets are not as efficient. Um, books are not spending as much time on their lines as uh, as they are on the game lines. And some of the lines are just getting moved based on, you know, at certain books, just based on action. Um, I do think other books are accounting for sharper action a little bit. But I think the, I think the main takeaway with, with CLV in this is just that the bat is out there. Um, generally, when you're betting something with the bat X, you will find you're on the right side of the closing line value. And part of that is artificial because the bat is out there and other people are betting it too. But I think it speaks to the quality of the product that the books have that much respect for it, that this many people are using it, they're betting into it, they're probably winning with it, and the books are then moving their action because all these people are betting it um, you know, with the bat and have this winning record. And so it's, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a cycle. It's a little bit of a, you know, it's kind of hard to figure out what your actual CLV is. Um, but over time it's proven out that regardless of whether you're getting that CS CLV or, or rather regardless of whether the CLV is artificial or not, uh, you're generally going to be profitable using this. What are your thoughts though on the adverse selection problem? So for instance, and I say this from experience, and I try to teach these on my stream, that the longer something is up, 
the more and more likely it's efficient because of adverse selection. Because obviously if an opener comes up, strikeout number comes up, it's five and a half. Let's say five and a half minus 110, just whatever, both sides, whatever, right? And let's say your project, whether it be the bat projections, your own model or whatever you're using, right? I'm just going to use a very extreme example, Derek. You're projecting eight and a half strikeouts as a median. The number's at five and a half, right? First off, I would say that if you're that far off, double check your numbers, right? Yeah. But let's just use an extreme example like that. So the opener's five and a half. So I do what I normally do before I go to bed. Check the projections, go, shit, got to bet this. So I bet 50 bucks on the over, right? Uh, and maybe I rebet it in the morning, maybe. But the thing is, is that if I'm betting it, let's say, at midnight, and then I wake up at eight in the morning, and the number's still five and a half at minus one ten. It's been up for eight hours and hasn't moved. I'm looking at something that says it's absurdly off, and I have to assume that unless, unless you know, people are everyone in the, all seven billion people in the world are asleep, other people have seen this number also. Now. In the morning, maybe people and not enough people have seen it overnight. But if it's six o'clock at night, an hour before game time, and it's five and a half at minus one ten, how how advisable is it that? Well, my number says it should be eight and a half. So how so do you I, deal with the the adverse selection? Because there will be plenty of instances. I would say on a yeah. regular basis, where the bat is literally off market where where yeah. it it's saying an under it's saying this pitcher projects for 3.7 strikeouts as a median his number is at five and a half you know yeah five and a half minus 112 or something and that was it really hasn't moved in 14 hours some people's instinct is well shit i gotta bet more on it <laughs> my attitude is I go the like my attitude is the opposite that I'm I would be more likely to bet the most early a little bit in the morning and then as it stays out there the less in fact I feel worse the more and more it stays the same even though I'm using your projections that it's hard it's hard to say that the the, the market could be even in props to be that far off that there was lure, almost no movement. But some people would say, well, if the bat, if the bat, hey, Derek says the bat projections, they're the best projections. <laughs> so even at six o'clock at night, I'm going to bet the over in that scenario. And, and especially for the people, Derek, that don't look at the projections until six at night, they may not realize that that number is the opener. Right. So what do you what do you say with you have your you say your projections are the projections. Is there some amount of of accountability in well at some point you have to give the market some credit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I believe the bad X is the best set of projections available anywhere, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you that they are absolutely perfect and gospel and you know they are fallible to an extent like every projection system no matter how good is going to have certain biases it's going to have certain certain blind spots and so yeah i would be i would take the same approach as you where you want to get into the market early you want to get the best line possible and because we know the bad x moves the market so much if there's a case where it's just not moving. I'm probably a little less confident in that one than I would be in the one that I got five hours earlier that did move. Um, now, I, I don't have anything concrete to back it up. I would think the bat is still beating the market in those, but I would think the the return is a lot lower. Uh, I mean, it would have to be a lot lower than on the ones where it was so off and it moved really quickly and, and it just it moved drastically. Right, so be careful on the props that show bigger edges later in the day 
Would that yeah. be would that be a good 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 like rule of thumb to go by? That if it's six o'clock and this edge is shown as a thirty eight percent edge since last night, be be weary. Be weary. Doesn't mean that that it may not have an edge. It just be much more weary than a bet that has a five percent edge at six o'clock that just moved or something like that. Like the more recent movement counts more than the number's been up for fourteen hours. Yeah. And kind of the one caveat to all this that I will say is that you can still find value at six o'clock, you know, right before games start. What you want to identify, and this is why you should be looking early no matter what, is which ones have actually been up for that long and which one just got added an hour ago because the pitcher wasn't announced on time or because he was, you know, a guy that the books didn't feel that confident in. So they didn't have his lineup first thing at 11 p.m. the night before. You know, if the market's only been out an hour, and it's showing huge value, there's a good chance it probably is good value. Um, just because it's right up against game time doesn't mean it can't have value. But understanding the context of, of the actual prop in the market itself, I think is really important. Have you have you thought about doing at any point a live, a live version of the bat? Uh, what do you mean? Like in-game, live. Oh, in-game. Yeah. Right. So I've thought about it. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of edge there and you probably wouldn't even need anything too sophisticated to beat those markets. But the way I think about it, I'm like, oh my God, there's so many things I would want to account for. It would be so hard. Um, Cause like, I want to make it perfect. <laughs> um, so at some point I might, I might dive into it. Uh, I haven't had the time to do that yet though. Uh, let me tell you that there are edges there and you can actually use the act, your bad projections as is in order to find. Oh, wow. I like hearing right. that. <laughs> right. Let, let, let's just say that there are certain live markets in the pitch, in the pitching, in the pitching category that with some common sense, if you want now, it obviously it's work because you have to find the spots. So like, remember I'm the type of person that I want to put in an hour and be done with it. I don't, I'm not here. I'm here watching games, but I did find, like, mid-game, you know, third. it's the third inning. And let's just say it's all based around pitch counts. That typically, if a lot of numbers that were generate that prop markets that are generated on a pitch count did not update in time for their current pitch count, that makes it so that certain bets are much less likely to happen because they're probably not going to be in the game long yeah, that, enough. For that, would to happen. My, that would have been right, my guess right. where the right. edges are going to That's be. That's why yeah. I, I suggested it's like when it comes to like, and those those things those things go quick. So it's not like it's, it, oh, they're, oh, they'll be up for five minutes. It's like, no, they'll be up for like a minute type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I asked about the, uh, there was a live version of that where I could plug, plug in the bat numbers live like, I mean, it would just be like shooting fish in a barrel. Like just yeah. because you'd, it would just all be on a screen and you'd just be like, okay, grab that, grab that, grab this, grab this. So maybe, maybe I give you a, a, a worm, a memory hole, worm hole <laughs> in your head of like, oh, maybe, and, and maybe that you charge $5,000. Yeah, maybe something like that. I think, I think for sure. I mean, just the sheer number of betting opportunities you have in game for something like that would, would justify it. So at some point, I will probably do that. We'll have to see how long that takes. Right. I'm trying to see. I'm I'm I I'm I'm the least out of all of out of all of us. The people watching, Derek, you. I'm 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 doing the I'm getting the least out of doing these videos. <laughs> I just realized that now. I'm getting I'm getting the least. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I didn't want right. to point it out. <laughs> right. You didn't want to point. I'm get, I'm getting the least. I'm getting I get I get no referral link. Right. Uh I don't get any affiliate fees from unabated. Uh, I'm telling people to use something that I want them to use less from, from my own betting. But I also want to provide value of like, this is exactly what I do to grow the YouTube channel. And obviously I have courses for sale theory of DFS.com. And then I just hope throughout the process that, that Derek Hardy just charges a lot more for it so yeah. that I could still do this and then people look and go, I ain't paying, I ain't paying five grand for this. Like, okay. Well, I would I would pay five grand for like I would. 
right? <laughs> I'd rather be one of the few people that pay five thousand than one of the whole bunch of bunch of people that pay five hundred. So that's yeah. why I'm I'm putting it to me that to me that's the best sale to me. I don't know about you. I think I'm the best sales pitch when it comes when I'm actively saying, I wish you charged more and I wish less people used it. <laughs> You're not the only one. I hear that a lot. <laughs> and it's something I've definitely considered. <laughs> Derek Cardi at on Twitter at Derek Cardi. You could find him uh at, at the Roto Grinders Discord, the unabated Discord. You could find the bat at rotogrinders.com or evanalytics.com. Thanks, Cardi, for uh, coming on at the start of the 2024 MLB season. Hopefully, it'll be like the past seven. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I've ever. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had a losing. No, sorry, I have 20. I think 2018, 2018 or 2019 was my only like losing MLB season in DFS. But I guess seven out of eight years profit. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> So hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new here, and go get the bat.